Hello, greetings from uh, Carl Werner, Oslo, and welcome to this studio release. Uh, today I'm gonna present work number 317. Um, and the title of this work is Call to Arms. Um, I did this work uh, by slamming my fist in the wet filler, uh, like that, uh, with the back of my fist, like you do. I had the uh, the, the panel on the, on a small table, uh, so I could just slam it, my fist in the wet filler, like it was on a table. And I did this 99 times while I was walking around around the the, the panel. So I got, and I used both hands. And I, I did it in a particular um, uh, in a particular uh, rhythm also, ba bam, ba bam, ba bam, like a heartbeat, right? Uh, and also, yes. Uh, so this is how I did this work. And I think I'm just gonna take off the the, um, the cover now and reveal the work as, and talk a little bit more about it. So this is Call to Arms, number 317. So this, uh, this is the expression that we've made. I was slamming my fist from all angles, you can see, uh, and I walked around it. So, you, so there is kind of a movement here from the center and, and outwards, in a way. Um, and of course, this use of, a, of, a, of the fist is, has, has a symbolic meaning to me, like it's uh, symbolizing um, protest uh, in, like in, in a conversational mode, uh, but could also mean, to me at least, protest in a, in a larger sense that when, when you have enough of something, you, you, you show it directly. And this slamming with the fist is also sort of a sign um, telling that this is enough, n enough of, of talking. Um, so it's a shift in modus also from, uh, from uh, 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 when you want to change something by discussion and you go into more of a um, struggle modus where you, you, you have the kind of um, established the lines of disagreements, uh, you might say. But this work, it actually came to me uh, in a dream. <laughs> uh, it's not so uh, uh, seldom actually that I have ideas for work when I, when I go to, when I dream or when I fall asleep or early in the morning. But this was kind of really clear when I woke up. I have dreamt about this work um, that I was kind of beating on, on the filler, on the panel with filler, like on a drum in a way, and I had this title already in my head that it was going to call, be called uh, Call to Arms. Um, and then I uh, kind of developed it a little bit more instead of beating with my palms and kind of playing on them, I, I, I moved over to them using the fist because I've done that before and I kind of like that uh, symbol, symbolic of it. But and that's not enough. I also actually had a dream of a poem that was almost ready written in my head. So I just woke up early in the morning and I just reached for my phone and typed the poem in. Um, and uh, afterwards, of course, I, I, I kind of um, changed it a little bit, but the basic of the poem was already there. And I'm, I'm um, I think, in a, I feel in a way that this poem is kind of part of this work in a sense. Uh, so I have made a video of it that you might have seen, I posted on, on my Facebook page where I have kind of uh, used the um, video from the production of it. And I um, put up uh, the, the, the text of the poem on top of it, uh, superimposed or what you call it, 
on top of the video, quite uh, simple. And I'm, when I ex exhibit this work, I probably will, will have a, uh, a monitor showing this video somehow uh, at the same time. Um, but I think I'm going to read this poem to you uh, now as well, actually, um, because I feel it's, it's part of it, in, in a sense. Listen to the beat. They are few. We are many. The fruit of labor belongs to all. We don't have to cut the tree. We just have to shake it. The fruit will fall into our hands, into our arms. This is a call to arms. So that is, that's it. I'm not sure if it's a good poem or not, but at least I feel, uh, at least I feel it's important uh, together with this work because it has this kind of dual, duality to it. I feel uh, with the word, word arms that could be like um, weapons uh, and uh, like a, a protest or a revolt, uh, violent one, but also this reaching out of, of your arms or you, with your physical arms uh, that's more like a positive, uh, what you call it, or maybe not positive. I think it, a revolt or, or, uh, could also be a positive thing, of course, so, but a different kind of, of um, modus to, to create change, I guess. Uh, yes, um, because I, I feel that we need to, to um, to be many, to create the change that we actually need, uh, in a sense, uh, and uh, and this is why I did it also 99 times to kind of uh, point towards this 99% of us, the the working class or the masses, the the people who are employed and don't have ownership of the means of production and the companies and the people who are making money out of owning stuff. Uh, I think we all have to come together and create uh, the changes that society needs. I feel need, society needs. Um, but I, w I wanted to do one more thing before I kind of uh, talk a little bit more about this. Uh, uh, it is about this um, fist work. Th this work is a recipsa. It's part of the recipsa compilation, meaning I did it in the, in the, in the wet filler, but it's not part of any other uh, series, uh, it's, so it's a kind of more freestanding free single work in that sense. But I, I have one series of work where I'm using my fist, um, and this this work is called End of Conversation, um, Bastaya, and this is made of that I just slam my fist into a small uh, frame like this, just once. And this series is a kind of special one. It's, um, uh, it's uh, an unlimited edition series. Each work will be numbered and part of my body of work, but you can kind of commission me to do more if you want. And they are quite cheap. You can find them um, on my website on the section uh, End of Conversation, Bastaya. And it kind of looks like this. Yes. So this is uh, the number 231. This is for sale, uh, and um, but there's an unlimited series, so uh, you can just order as many as you want, actually, and I will produce them by commission. And they will look similar, almost the same, but of course a little bit different every time. Yes, I wanted to say, um, Actually, uh, when I, for the first time with this work, I wanted to introduce um, another thing that I've been doing. Because a lot of my works, of course, are, uh, uh, have a sort of critique to um, 
society in, in different sense and, and especially to the economic system that we live under capitalism and um, uh, I'm very um, um, engaged in uh, in equality I think equality is important uh, um, for the society and I think we have uh, the, the disparity the, the differences in income uh, and also uh, discrimination is kind of a um, overflowing uh, our society in many ways and I think this is a, a, a serious problem and something I, I really want to do something about and think a lot about so it's kind of influencing my work a lot but in a way I feel always always that you, you come you point them on all these problems and you have all this um, critique of things that you are disappointed with but you very 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 rarely or show what what do you want to do what is your solution to to these problems because it's easy to sometimes it's easy to point out what is wrong and not so easy to say what should be done about it so i have actually uh, thought a lot about how i wanted how 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 i, I would uh, would um, uh, organize society if I had the chance and now in, in doing this I'm quite inspired by um, Yoko Ono actually um, and her um, uh, long-lasting theme of imagine peace that she started with John Lennon um, I think it's an art the artists artists have a um, privilege and the uh, uh, almost also you could say a responsibility to think utopian and to think not maybe uh, in a way that politicians do like they w when they change stuff uh, and through politics there's a craft to it you kind of have to s think strategically and you have to uh, 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 always have in mind what is actually possible to do and uh, and you make alliances and, and all that stuff um, but as an artist you can you can just skip all that and, and, and go directly to how you want things to be and, and in that sense think utopian uh, and I think uh, this is a, 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 an important task for us artists to do that and, uh, and uh, this is why I have actually created an, uh, a sort of um, economic uh, uh, an um, uh, uh, a new economic system that could replace capitalism. Of course, um, um, this this and this economic system um, uh, is based on what I call a radical equality, a radical economic equality, and uh, and it's uh, the thing about this is that if you take, we usually agree that every human is equal has has um, equal value that we shouldn't uh, um, like in the in the human rights uh, declaration of human rights uh, every it says that every every one uh, living has has an equal value and should be um, uh, ha has a certain amount of rights um, but if you take this uh, literally, the, the equal value of, of every human being, um, it, what does it mean? It means, of course, that our time uh, uh, should... Because what is life? What is a human life? It's the time that we spend, the hours and minutes and years that we live on, uh, on this earth. This is, our, uh, this is our life and this, this is what a, uh, um, the basic thing of a human being is it uh, his or her time so in that sense I feel that everybody's time should also be valued equally and this is not the case today right because we, we um, sort of sell our time uh, when we when we when we are hired and do jobs and and this um, uh, work is made into a commodity labor and the price of labor is, is set by demand, uh, you might say, and the people who are buying our, our labor uh, want 
the price, of course, to be as low as possible to get the, the, the best possible profit. Um, but in my idea here is that we, we, should, we should take out uh, labor as an, uh, and uh, stop treating it as a commodity and instead have a fixed price for, uh, for human labor so, so that anything uh, we do, we get, we'll, no matter if you're good or, or bad or smart or uh, what, what kind of job you do, you should have the same salary rate. Like if you work one hour, you get paid for one hour and it would be the same price uh, um, wherever, um, whichever work you do. Um, because we, I think we should value, um, we should price uh, uh, the, the work we do, not, not because what it is worth to the, the people are, who are using it, but more what the time uh, that we spend what it's worth to us and that, that will be the same price because everyone's life is as equally important to anyone. Um, so this is the main thing about this idea that I have and that there should be like a universal salary rate. And, um, and um, more than that, um, I think in this system it was also would also be not possible to hoard wealth because the profit, uh, I feel, uh, of, of, uh, 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 from work, in a sense, belongs to everyone who is putting in the hours and doing the work. So it, it should be shared equally. Uh, and this, of course, is the, like, no, no, not so different from what socialism um, teaches. Uh, but my idea is somewhat different because I think um, and, uh, that also uh, anyone who has started a company I, uh, should have the right to own this company. I, I don't think like you do in socialism that it's a good thing to, to um, uh, get rid of, uh, of the right to ownership, private ownership of the means of production. Uh, already now, of course, a lot of um, um, companies and, and organizations and uh, society, uh, associations are owned collectively. Uh, so, and 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 a lot of um, industries owned by the state. And I think that is good, and we should do that, of course. But I also think it's very important that you have a possibility to to. Um, to start a business and, and kind of develop an idea and, and uh, make it grow and call it your own and have, have power over this. Um, but I've written uh, down these ideas and, and give it a name uh, and I call it commensalism. So you could uh, either better uh, you, should, you could read about this on this website that I have started. Um, I will also post it in the in the comment field of course um, the link to it. Um, so commensalism is an idea that I have uh, that I have um, developed. And I, I, I'm trying now, this is the first try to kind of integrate this a little bit more into my art practice. Um, uh, it's not uh, this idea and this website I have created, it's not like an uh, artwork, but I, I'm doing it as an artist. And I think it's kind of a part of my practice in a way to have this. And I, I will try to integrate it in different ways into my work when I feel it's, it's suitable. Uh, in the future and I think this was a good, good opportunity to do this for the first time with this quite political uh, work or at least to me it's political but of course it's abstract so I think anyone who sees it would would not uh, think it's political but maybe if you kn knew the know the 
the title, you will have a little bit of more of an idea. And if you hear the poem, you will even more feel that maybe this is there is something political to this. And of course, the conceptual background with the fists is also a part and part important part of this work. Um, I will show you some uh, close-ups of this before we finish. Here you can see the work from the side. You see that the frame is about five centimeters thick. I'm going in here so you can see how the filler is looking when you see it up close. You can see the end of the, the side of the work here, that the filler goes straight up to the edge of the frame. So the frame is an integrated part of the work. Okay, thank you for watching this uh, studio release and uh, I hope you see you next time. Bye bye.